The following podcast has been brought to you by Audible.com. Sign up now using the URL audibletrial.com forward slash TTV to get a free audiobook of your choosing. We recommend Brick by Brick, how Lego rewrote the rules of innovation and conquered the global toy industry. You may recognize this as one of the sources we use in our show, Bionicle Autopsy. Remember, that's audibletrial.com forward slash TTV. Enjoy the show. Wait, we never really established who was going to do this. Okay, whatever. Five, right. four, three, two, one. Sink. Sink. Hey, everybody. I'm Var. I'm Kahi. I'm Ben. And this is TTV Talks. Now, see, I, I took the rain there. It was like no one else is going to do the intro, so I took the... I took the I did it. Good job, boss. Good job, boss. <laughs> what is a boss? <laughs> the boss? How can I trust the boss ever again? <laughs> are you are you quoting Metal Gear now? Is this what is this what it's come to? Yeah, that's what, this is how we're opening up the episode. We're we're quoting Metal Gear. Dude, I have Metal been obsessed with that game, man. Metal Gear. <laughs> I was talking about it like when it came out, my life was like segmented into Metal See, Gear and Kahi, you not were such a loser. Like I you're was. Just, you're you're Dang. a big loser. It's like I I don't know. It, it's like you so never. Now, touch now your you're Xbox, making me feel ever. bad because I was gonna agree with Kai, and then you called him a loser. And now I'm like, oh man, well, you're a loser, kind of a loser too, loser but for to- different reasons. Whoa, so I'm, I'm saying Kai's a loser Whoa. because Hold like on there, boss. <laughs> boss. No, Kai's a loser because <laughs> 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 because um. It's just like whenever there's like a game, it's all you never touch your Xbox until like one game happens to come out, right? It's not like I play games all the time. I play all kinds of new games. Oh and I'm yeah, able to Destiny, my life yeah. and balance it. But yeah, like you get you get one game you get, and then it's just you play that nonstop. Last time it was Destiny, now it's Metal Gear. But remember, last time it was Destiny was last year. I'm doing it because I don't play video games as much anymore. And I, need to I know that's, a, that's yeah. why you're a loser. It's because you don't play video games at all until like you just binge. Well, it's because I have it. school and work to do, man. And up until and you get like, out that you're I'm like, like obese. Right, cool. You well, get like the obesity except for video games. No, okay, no, no. Well, let's not I'm talk like, about I'm obesity. Like, no, <laughs> I'm you, like the freaking, you don't do, you binge you binge gaming. I'm like Christian Bale. Like, I will go, like, you know, for a role, I'll I think that's giving yourself way too much credit. And then I'll binge watch, and then I'll starve myself off again. I haven't touched my Xbox in about almost a week now. But I do it, the reason why I do it is because a lot of the games that aren't multiplayer games, like Halo, Halo I buy. But a lot of the single player games, I will get and I'll play them and I'll rent them. Mm-hmm. So I only pay $7 instead of $60. See, so it's sad that so you what happens that because with Metal Gear... You can't just Metal rent gear. it. Well, I, what is when I rented renting? it, like I had a, I had five days off for work. I had basically five days, I guess six days off from work. Not and, enough. Uh, I played all day, and I got through chapter one, and then I had to return it. So that's as much as I got. And then you I, guys I are some other insane. Stuff I've had the I've had the game for like three weeks now, and I'm 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 ten percent into the game. Now who's the loser now? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry that I can actually balance my video game time and my life and my job, you know, getting the channel and knowing our schedule and getting my videos up when they hey, need to be up. I do that too. Kahi. Well, I'm Listen, talking to Kahi, Vin, not uh, you. Okay. Yeah. I don't, but since I don't you, but since you decided to put yourself yeah, on the spot, like, that. Vin, you're a loser. You, you're stupid. I balance my life too, man. I don't know what you're talking about. But, I mean. No, hey, you can't. You can't balance your life. You haven't totally. gotten your top ten done. I totally did. It's already up. Okay, whatever. But anyway. <laughs> so yeah. It's already up on Dropbox. You're probably already editing it right now. Or you're supposed to. Bar. You balance TTV. At, no, I can't edit it. Elder edits it. Oh, he edits the whole thing? What, what do no, you edit? I, I, I edit the um the, the fancy little text titles. Oh, things. you do the little thing. Okay. That's yeah. Right. Elder does the slideshow itself. But with that said, this actual episode isn't being edited by LJ. You're right. Okay. Yeah, oh, thank okay. God. It's gonna have a different editor, but um, yeah, and no, so I haven't really gotten much into uh, Metal Gear Solid Five yet. But it, from what I have played, it's been really, really fun. Oh man, um, I found it so hard to put down since I, uh, I since know. I got it. 
Gameplay so good. is really good. Like, the controls were awkward at first, but, like, I played Ground Zeroes, so I kind of got a hang of it before right. I started the game. Right. Um, I didn't really like Ground, Ground Zeroes that much. It didn't seem like there was much of a game there. I know, like, a lot of people are like, oh, it's got a lot of replayability, which, I mean, I don't no, necessarily, dis- I, I don't I don't necessarily don't do dispute, but it's... There, I don't know. It was kind of like a demo, really, well, like yeah. a sixty dollars demo. It, the whole thirty dollars demo. It got thirty dollars demo. Like, I got it for free off Xbox Live Gold, so I yeah yeah. I don't know how much it was? I didn't get Ground Zeroes because I like I played it. I played Ground Zeroes, um, and it's just one base, and it takes away from like the entirety of the game, which is this whole open world aspect to it that it's not really represented in that one level. It has you replay. Well, mm-hmm. there are side ops that you can do. Right, but it still take place in the same base. See, that, I mean, that's the thing, though. It's like Ground Zeroes is basically a single side ops mission. Right. Yeah. And if you think that, like, there, like you could go around thinking up until Metal Gear Solid Five came out and you could see footage from it, that it wasn't going to be an open world game just based off this demo. It would just be, like, oh, yeah, different no. bases. Ground you know. Zeroes is an anomaly because it wasn't even supposed to be a thing. Really, the only reason why it exists is because Konami wanted something at launch... For the PS4. Yeah, because so wasn't Ground Zeroes originally in the Phantom Pain? Yeah, wasn't that like the first level? It was right. supposed to be the prologue. <laughs> yeah. So, but Konami was like, no, we need something, man. We, we got to have something. The PS4 just came man, out. Man, Konami's stupid. And so, Kojima's like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll throw out the prologue, I guess. Make it its own yeah. standalone game. And then Konami's like, yay! Let's set it for $30! <laughs> Konami's dumb, man. No, yeah, Konami's yeah. terrible. I, I'm still... I wonder if, like, uh, PS4s with uh, Silent Hill is still, like, super, super uh, rare, because I still have mine, and it still has Silent Hills downloaded. Yeah, I still have mine, too. I looked into it not too long ago, and um, I don't think they're really selling for as much as they did initially. Mm. I'm It'll super pro- upset that game's not coming out. I, I, I am too. So bad. For, for anyone who is behind in listening to this, um, Silent Hills was a game that was going to be developed by Konami with Hideo Kojima, who made Metal Gear Solid. He was uh, teaming Hideo. up with uh, Guillermo del Toro, who was a famous director. It was yeah. supposed to be really good. And Hideo Kojima, the thing about this guy is that he... He he was the man behind all the Metal Gear Solid games and really gave them their identity. Like, there, there's a style about these games and their storytelling that's all because of him. Right. And, like, he sets the tone, he sets the atmosphere, and he shines the most in um, MGS5, I feel, when it comes to that. Oh, yeah, he's right. the atmosphere all over Quiet and Eva <laughs> and any of those other characters. But anyway, he, he's a very stylistic director of video stylistic, games. Stylistic, that's, that's the word. <laughs> and what's, in, what's really interesting about him is that... Um, he likes to make his video games very cinematic. <laughs> so yeah, you mean yeah, it, you mean like make take out the video game part and just keep the video? <laughs> no, just make <laughs> yeah yeah literally make a video game. <laughs> right. No, the video is really where half the time, a movie where you occasionally control the character. Yeah, half the time you're playing, and then now the the other half of the time you're watching. Long well, not scenes. not for this game, not for Metal Gear no, Solid. No, not 5. for MGS Five. MGS Five is yeah, really I gotta say, okay, the cutscenes. I will say that um, I did get Metal Gear Solid, Solid Five, and I played it a little bit. Um, it inspired me to go out and get the uh, HD collection, and I played Metal Gear Solid Three. I've started off at three, and I'm probably gonna finish that before I actually continue my Metal Gear Solid Five campaign. But um, I, I will say though, it was it was kind of jarring going into Metal Gear Solid Three, and have like the first four hours or so be primarily cutscene. <laughs> yeah. And oh, then go yeah. back to Metal Gear Solid 5 where it's all just... It's mostly gameplay like barely, and there's hardly Yeah, there's cut barely scenes. any cutscenes at all. Yeah, which because is really good. they did this... It feels like it needs more cutscenes. Yeah, it it's does. Like it doesn't feel right. It does. And that's like that's been a big complaint about Phantom Pain is that they're not... Like a lot of fans feel like there's not enough. There's not enough cutscenes mm-hmm. like before. And I can definitely see that because it's like Boss himself is just kind of... He's, he's super not quiet. Really, right. Yeah, he's so silent. He's barely. It feels like he's barely in the game, despite you playing him the majority of it. Yeah, because so. Snake was always quite a talkative sort of character in the previous. He was really games. talkative in three. Uh, yeah, another especially in thing. three. <laughs> another jarring thing is stupid. So we you probably heard us open up with that stupid joke, but like I, Snake's voice, it's just <laughs> it's so campy in three. It's what pretty, what were they great. going for? That's it's so great. bad. I think that's kept you waiting, huh? think that that that's on purpose 
I'm sure they kept it is, but it's pretty funny for like every single game up until um, Ground Zeroes. Even Peace Walker. Yeah, even Peace Walker. Yep. Oh, that's so weird because it's like it's just his voice doesn't it doesn't match what I would assume his voice to sound like when I see his face. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm expecting something more like grunt, grunt. Like you're expecting ke- something like and... Kiefer Sutherland again, but you yeah, aren't ex- something more like Kiefer Sutherland. You weren't expecting but it's just like... this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, weren't you weren't expecting, expecting this. David Haters take on the snake. My name is Snake. What's a snake? Also, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> Questions. All like I would I would guarantee you like seventy percent of Snake's dialogue in in a Snake Eater is is all questions. <laughs> He's like Holly. If you watch Minog two, imagine Holly, but like times fifty. That's Snake. That, I mean, like, geez, <laughs> the guy just has so many questions. Snake, we're sending you on a mission. What's a mission? <laughs> <laughs> What's a mission? It's a thing that you do. All right. What do I do? Well, you use your weapons, and what is a weapon? It's the gun that we're going to give you. Oh, you're going to give me a gun? Well, no, you actually have to go find it. I have to find it? <laughs> yeah, you have to You have to pick it off dead enemies. Dead enemies? Yeah, you're going to be fighting the Soviets. How do I know if they're dead? <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a Metal Gear? <laughs> metal Gear. Metal never, gear. He always says that. Like, he uses Metal Gear for, like... <laughs> metal it's, Gear. It's not just Metal Gear. It's Metal Gear question mark? <laughs> metal <laughs> Gear. <laughs> a question mark? Yeah. Like, dot, 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 dot question dot, mark? Dot. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> metal Gear. <laughs> metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know, hey... The voice acting in that game is all all around like just it's, odd because like Josh campy. Keaton's in it too. Oh yeah, and Josh Ke- is spy. He, you might know him because he plays Spider Man and like everything. Um, but he's he does the voice of Revolver Ocelot, which is like a secondary main character. Um, who's just like he, just wow. The voice acting is just so odd. Yeah, and you can definitely tell at that point that it it's got to be on purpose because Josh Keaton's actually a pretty good voice actor. Yeah, he is a good voice actor. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's on purpose, but it, it is so very strange. It, it must be because um, at that point they they must have embraced just how bad it was in the previous games. Like I was telling Kahi earlier, in Metal Gear Solid One, I believe there was some translation issues because the game was originally written in Japanese. So when they ported it over right. to English and they had the okay. English voice acting, something sounded really awkward. I think that's kind of how it huh. all started. They just sort of embraced how that re- all those results. It just kind of. I mean, yeah. It, se- it seems like the Metal Gear series really likes to play up that like, oh, this is a super, super serious, super awesome campaign. But then they also like to play on the fact that it's also a video game. Yeah. Yeah. No, they 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 do this like it's. I don't know how to say it. it's not tongue in cheek. They're not making fun of themselves, but they use the medium in such a creative way. Yeah. And they're See, not ashamed of it. Like when right. I initially described the Metal Gear series to like I think LJ. And um, a couple other people, I was like, it's sort of like, if you've ever seen Kill a Kill, it's this anime where um, all the characters live in this world where their clothing gives you powers, right? And that sounds like a completely ludicrous concept. And it is. The show itself is stupid. It is really, really dumb. Like, they wear these, like, super skimpy outfits and it gives them, like, giant swords and awesome powers and they fight each other. But the characters themselves all take it super seriously. Yeah. But you as you as the viewer, you see it and you're like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Right. And it, it's kind of like that with Metal Gear where it's like the characters in the game itself, they take the whole story so seriously. But like then you've got characters that are like, all right, all right, Snake, push the crouch button to sneak up behind right, your enemy. Yeah, no, that was the thing I was going to say that when uh, in Metal Gear Solid 5, the intro, I remember I was playing the intro and they do that. They do that thing where they fake you out. They make you look like you're creating a character. And then you, you're like, it, you don't. Um, but anyhow, once you're escaping from the place, the guy, and this is completely like, it's been cinematic, it's been completely serious all, up until now. And the guy who's like running around, he's like, oh, boss, press the, press the X button to crouch. I'm like, did he just, did he just say that? <laughs> yeah, and it's like that, it's like that in uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, too. Yeah, they do right? that in all the, the very, games. The very first mission you're in, you lose your bag at, <clears throat> on top of the tree with all your supplies. And the guy on the phone's like, well, you better go get that. Make sure you press the triangle button to climb that tree. <laughs> no, yeah. One of the first things you, you hear just, in the very first game is... He just says it is, completely seriously. Yeah. The fir- one of the first things that you hear in the very first game is, just press the select button if you have any questions. 
It's like, yeah, okay. yeah. And it's like there are other things like that too where uh, like for example the boxes, the box system entirely is just ridiculous. Oh yeah, the cardboard yeah. boxes. That's the cardboard great. box is insane. It's like an that would anime. never work in any in any real life setting, but it, it works in the Metal Gear series <laughs> and it's just weird. Yeah. It's like it's really just an anime just crammed into a video game, but it's really aware that it's just a video game. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of breaks the fourth wall in a, in a sense like that, where it's like it's, yeah. <laughs> but the stories are still really good. They're very in depth, and I think Kojima does a really good job to- uh, telling them for the most part. He obviously mm-hmm. he has his. I think he has his. Moments. There are some pacing issues. <laughs> yeah, there are there are a lot of pacing issues. Uh, but I mean, it's a longer format. But I feel like there's so much empty time given to like people walking around kind of dramatically or dramatic pauses or like dialogue that just kind of goes nowhere. Yeah, and there's a lot of times where the games will like trick you into like a cutscene sort of or whatever. Like for example, in Snake Eater, at Metal Gear Solid 3, I went to go save my game. And to save the game, you have to call oh, yeah, a yeah, medic who is to talk to someone. <laughs> yeah, who's um like this girl that's kind of keeping you on track and everything. So you you have to call her and she'll say, "Are you saving the game?" and you click yes. But sometimes I'll go to call her and she'll start up a conversation before it lets you save the game. And this conversation could last like up to five to ten minutes. And I'm like, I, I just I came to this just so I could save the game. But she's talking to me about movies and Godzilla. And I'm like, well, why am I <laughs> trying to save the game? Yeah. So it does it does that sometimes, which can be a little frustrating. But it's also it's like part of the series. Though. It's kind of weird. It's like I enjoy it in a way. Yeah. It's regardless. Right. It's, it's, it's for your entertainment. Yeah, it's it's really unique. Like no other game will. It, it, the game kind of trolls you in a bit, in, in a way. Oh, yeah. Where it like Kojima's it kind of knows troll. what it's doing, and, it, and it's kind of just like screwing with you a bit. And, and it seems like it's aware of that. Oh yeah, there's wow. a point. MGS five kind of MGS five is so weird because uh, it really breaks out of the MGS norm. You know, the pacing mm. isn't as awkward. We don't have that many cutscenes or th- all this weird exposition. All the exposition and a little bit of the story really is condensed into um, what it, the cassette tapes. I'm sure you guys have seen that in the game where you can go into like yeah. a certain menu and you can listen to some audio tapes right. and you'll hear characters talking Either they'll be explaining something that that's been discovered in the story, or they'll they'll it'll just be dialogue that kind of develops the characters a bit more, and that's mm-hmm. cool and all. And I I think uh, the reason for that is so we don't have those long freaking cutscenes because that was a big complaint with MGS four specifically that the cutscenes were yeah. really long. You put all the cuts. Which I can together. forgive for MGS4 because that was kind of a conclusion. It's like you kind of want to make sure all the story is there and everything. Yeah. So all the cuts in that game, though, when you put them together, adds up to like over eight hours. So I mean, yeah, no, wow. it, it, it's a it's a long game. It's Man. not. Like, yeah. yeah, you got a Man. while to go. So you go man, from super long cutscenes to having super short cutscenes and a little bit of supplemental. And I mean, Man. and that's cool and all, but it really does kind of make me. Me personally miss um, having longer cutscenes because until Phantom Pain came out, I went on a bit of a marathon playing through all the games, seeing how they were, getting uh, familiarized with how they were, and the controls mm-hmm. and everything. Because I I never really got into Metal Gear before until all this hype came up, and one of my friends was kind of helping me get into it because he's been into it for the longest time. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Phantom no, I Pain. Get, I get what you're saying. Does a Dude, pretty good job with the another, pacing. Definitely a good job with the gameplay. Go ahead. I, I was just going to talk about gameplay. There you go. Oh, like dude, the gameplay. Because, yeah, it's just Phantom Pain is amazing. It is amazing. But I got to say, going from Phantom Pain to Metal Gear Solid 3 <laughs> was a nightmare. Mm-hmm. The controls for yep. 3 is ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know whose idea or who was in charge of setting up the controls. But Hideo my Kojima. God. <laughs> have Kojima fun going, going, have fun going back to Metal Gear Solid 1. Like, what are these controls? Like, I, So, you would think the triggers would be what you would use to shoot, but no, the triggers are actually what you use to switch between items. Oh, yep. <laughs> and then, like, you have to aim, you have to click, you have to click the right, um, the right thumbstick, you have to push it down, then you have to hold 
the R1 button, and then to fire, you click the uh, the X button. So you're doing this like weird, crazy like grapple on your controller, holding these three buttons down just to shoot. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like how like holding an actual weapon, I guess. I do remember. Okay, I remember three being like trying to be a military like simulator. In a way, and they they had all this complex stuff for how you shoot and how you like repair injuries and yeah. how you do all, yeah. all that stuff. Injuries it was, are it freaking was very crazy. in depth with that kind of stuff, right? And uh, you know, the the Metal Gear series, something I really enjoy about them is that there you can clearly see the improvement going forward from each iteration in the series. Definitely, and yeah. The series goes through several generations of consoles, but you can definitely see how everything becomes more streamlined, how every iteration is more fun to play. Uh, and Snake Eater is a good looking game too. Oh, it's, for, I mean, for, for being its so time, old. Yeah, no. I mean, it's really good. This is around the GameCube comes out. Man, it looks good. Oh, yeah. Great, you're playing the games HD are version. Ahead of their time, honestly, I am playing but. the HD version. Yeah. But really, that's just it. They kind of just up the textures. Right. And that's all they really did. So, like, the polygons and everything are still the same. So, I don't know. It, it does look really, really good for its time, though. And, like, the gameplay, yeah, it's just a little, just a little odd. I, I mean,. I don't recommend starting with five if you're planning on playing the series. Right. Nah. Because you get spoiled, basically. Yeah, you do get spoiled. Well, I, I do take that back, actually. I think five is a good introduction into, like, the lore of Metal Gear and, like, the kind of the, the concepts behind it. Like, how you're thrown into this, like, hyper-realistic military simulator that's also super blown out of proportion and ludicrous and ridiculous and all these weird things are happening. Yeah. Yeah. With like the the cardboard M- boxes. MGS stuff, five so. gives you a really good um, like how 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 should we put it? In a nutshell, it's like an overview of yeah, a, an overview of what the Metal Gear series is like right. all about. So like, if that's what you're interested in, and like the lore and stuff, yeah, Metal, Metal Gear Solid Five is definitely a good place to start. And it's also like it's I would say it's the most fun to play out of. It is all definitely of the most fun oh, to play. Hell I did, yeah! I didn't mind actually moving from open world to uh, linear when I went to. Three. That wasn't really what I noticed that much. I think linear actually works pretty well. Yeah, because the whole point is like sneaking into, like sneaking in the bases and doing that kind of thing. There's a lot of missions in Metal Gear Solid Five that are basically those bases connected by having to run somewhere because you don't yeah. have dehorse and you said that. And I will say, like it. the open world concept actually does kind of make the game feel a little too overwhelming at times. Right. Right. There's times like, where you get you try to go from one place to another, and you're like, "Oh crap! This is yeah. outpost out here. I have to deal with right now." And there's yeah. like you've just got like a mission list of like five missions you got to get done, and it's like they're all on completely different sides of the map. I don't know. There's no well. I was about to say there's no fast travel, but you can call the helicopter in, but that's so much work. But see, the thing about the helicopter, though, I don't know if you can do this. I might have completely missed this mechanic. When I call the helicopter down, the helicopter takes me out into the like back into like the. The yeah, command yeah it room. does that for me too. I I wish like I wish I could just have it like take me from one point to, to another. another oh, like map. how you could because with Mother Base, in, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, they do I, that I, in I, the Mother Base cutscene too. They you, I agree. Like, you sit there and you watch the helicopter like fly for at least thirty seconds before you get to your destination. So the helicopter can fly around. That's like a mechanic in the world. Yeah, I mean you see the helicopter flying around too when you're out of. Yeah, right. it's a bit weird. So. Uh, I guess it's supposed to. Maybe it's supposed to promote, like, exploration of the open world. I don't know. I guess. Because this it might is just the be first. And then they kind of overlooked. Yeah, too. maybe. This, yeah, this is the first open world version of Metal Gear. But uh, but, but all the know. other games, while they are linear, they still provide you with, like, a bunch of different options to go about. Because that's, that's something that really caught me off guard with MGS1 is because uh, I, I went into that game knowing it was going to be linear, but I didn't know... What, like to what extent it was gonna be linear like i really thought the game was gonna kind of spoon feed me on the first mission mm-hmm. but no no it was like no it doesn't you really got at all you really gotta <laughs> these figure games out are your hard. Way. <laughs> the, these games are like all right here's a pencil you do the rest yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't even it doesn't teach you anything like i the most metal gear solid 3 taught me as far as controls go is press triangle to climb a tree after that i was i had to figure out every other single control Yep. myself by just playing the game and that was a very overwhelming part for me um when it came to mgs5 because i had just like played through the other games and mgs5 is practically a brand new game compared to those and so my first open world mission i'm like okay where do i go <laughs> what do i do yeah. right 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the first time where you have to like find the, like the first major mission where you have to find Kazu. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. That, I was. That was totally really lost. A, yeah, I was completely lost. It didn't tell you lost. what you needed to do or where you needed to go. You kind of had to just figure it out. Right. And back, you don't have any of your ways to find anybody either. You're just like, okay, so I, you go in and you kill everybody. And you're like, all right, if I kill everybody, something should happen. And just nothing happens. And I, I walked around that village for like an hour. Right. So like it, it, it points on the map like the village you have to go to. But once you go there, it doesn't tell you what to do. Yeah. So it's just like I, I sat there, I ki- I slaughtered everybody, and then I was just sitting there. And I'm like, so uh, was yeah, it meant to be a cutscene or something, right, or right. and this and it turns out you had to like like for me, I had to go into like a room. Oh, okay. and like this find is... a document that she... told me where to go. Right. Yeah. Then what yeah. did you have to do? Um, to do... I did the same did... thing. I, I found the document. So here's the thing about this game in particular is that it's not about what you're supposed to do. It's more like how you're going to do it. Right. And right. that's something I didn't even realize until later on cuz now if I go back to that first mission, I'm I'm going to go I'm going to breeze through that no problem because I know that like if I were to go into it right now, right? The second first thing I do is hide, spot all the enemies, go up to uh go up and stealth ninja like go up to an enemy and try to interrogate him, ask him where the documents are, kill him. And then sneak around the other well, you, guys. You couldn't, well, interrogate, you couldn't interrogate at him. that point. Yeah, because you don't you, you, have. You didn't have the translator. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, now I, I guess I could. Yeah, and if you went back, well, see, I mean, thing, if you went back with all your abilities right now, it'd be easy as heck. I, like, I think, like for me, the fascinating thing uh, for me going forward was that me and Ben both did this mission. This is a testament to how smart the AI is in this game, because the way the game's mission is set up. You know, some other games try to give you a thing where you can maybe do whatever you want, but I feel Metal Gear is the first game to really do that. For me, I just, for some, whatever reason, I probably got spotted before they took, uh, Cause out. So I killed everybody, and then I had to go find him. Instead of finding a note, I went down into a basement and found him. So that, those, that's like several things you can do. You can either go and find him immediately, you can go and, you know, find a document that takes, you know, takes you somewhere else to find it. There's all these different ways you can go about doing that mission. And I found it pretty interesting. That's how, like, different people have different experiences going forward. Yep. Like, there's this one mission in particular that's that was really challenging. You and I both played it, Kai. It's, like, towards the end of Chapter 1. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where you fight the, like, um, kind of the main threat of the game, the skulls. The skulls. Those guys... Are chumps. Freaking. All right, there is one thing I have against this game, and that's CQC. <laughs> Freaking CQC <laughs> is like you use the trigger button to do CQC, which is all right, fine. But you use it the button to also counter, which means that if you're looking down your sights and trying to shoot something or you're just trying to shoot something in general, you will miss the counter. Yeah. Wait, you can counter? Yeah, you can. There will be can a prompt the, telling the you to hold down the right trigger. Right. And no way. Yeah. Um, right. that, I've only really seen that come up in, uh, that boss fight, though. I haven't really seen it yeah, in other no. portions. No, it doesn't really happen, like, with others. And even then, like, I don't even... Wait, so can you, can you, can you counter just, like, normal attacks? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, okay. uh well, you can, yes. You can if there's CQC attacks, but not if they're uh, shooting at you. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, yeah, because there, there have been some times where I've, like, ran up to a guy and, like, he'll just knock me with the butt of his gun. Right, exactly. And then I'm just stuck in the ground. But if you I can, can counter that, You awesome. can counter that, yeah. Hmm. If you hit him with the butt of his gun, you, there's an animation that plays. But you have okay. to time it just right. Yeah, you really do have to time huh. it, I guess. Because you, every you time I've tried, be... I always failed. I just right. fall on my butt. Well, yeah, like, he just I, knocks me over. I also figured out what the thing is. It's not like Batman. You have to be facing the guy and then hit the right trigger. If, yeah. you, if you're like if you're if you're turned to the right or something, he'll hit mm-hmm. you. You have to be ah. facing him, and then you hit the. So button a bit more realistic. A bit more realistic, right? Huh. But the AI in this game too. Like I did a thing where I was my strategy would always be I'd go in, I'd have stealth, I had a uh, a submachine gun with a silencer, and uh, I would go and seek around, and I'd sh- like you know I tranquilize everybody by sh- giving them headshots, and then I would fault them up. All the high level ones. Okay, right. so wait a minute. So you have a submachine gun that can drink yeah. people? Because I can't find one like that. I've only seen tr- uh, submachine guns that just kill them. Oh it's no, a, it, it doesn't drink them. It stuns it. them. It's a it's a riot SMG. Oh, okay, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I oh, guess so. Oh, right. okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, for me, they okay. end up looking about the same because the tranquilizer. I guess it's a little longer, but it's basically the same. It's like, basically yeah, the, the duration's same. a little bit different. Duration's I think, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, 
I think if you melee them, like you punch them, that's the longest one. If you throw them to the ground, that's the second longest, and then it's stun, and then it's the trank. Right. That's the that's right. a tier of time right, it right. takes before they wake up. By the way, when they wake up, that, that has screwed me over so many times. Yeah, oh, no, it has. Yeah, no, I I've hate it to... when there's that one guy that you missed that just goes oh, around yeah, starting to wake really everybody annoying. up. Yeah, oh, I hate that I too. I hate like, him. Oh. I hate I'm that to get guy. Spell. Now, the best thing for me is when I was able to get quiet up to the level where she could get a tranquilizing <laughs> sniper rifle. And that had... Um, a silencer on it. Like, there's one you can get, it's just yeah. a sniper rifle that tranquilizes, and then there's one with a silencer on it. And that mm. helped me out so much. Because if I saw that guy going around, I'd be like, you know, quiet, quiet take a is shot. Quiet you just OP. <laughs> she's useful quiet. as I still, haven't, I still haven't gotten quiet. Like, I've gotten her, but she's not, like, available to Oh, you gotta go mission oh, You're, you're gonna something. love her when you actually get to use oh, her as a she buddy. she is amazing. There's sometimes, too, where, like, if I'm at an outpost, now that I have the silencer, I'll just have her, like, start, sh- you know, shooting. And it, they don't, the, uh, they aren't alerted to me if Quiet starts shooting them. Yeah. So they'll go around and they're distracted by something. And sometimes Quiet can take out everybody. And yeah, just there. yeah. The quiet completed <laughs> wow. a mission for me where I had to eliminate somebody. <laughs> she's done it. I was, like, yeah, she's I done was that going up too. to the guy who's like maybe uh, a couple of meters away from me that I was supposed to kill. And as I'm going up to him, sneaking, and he's like surrounded by a couple of guys, I'm like, oh man, how am I going to do this? Quiet kills him. She just takes him out. <laughs> right. She kills, she kills him. Not the other That's guys hilarious. surrounding him, him. And then it was like, mission complete. Exit the area, boss. Yeah. I was like, all right then. <laughs> I just turned around and left. I all right. I also have to admit, I am a sucker for people with high stats. I can't like if I'm running by like an outpost, I'm like I don't have time to do this, and I I, I just scan in my binoculars and I find someone who's like A plus plus. I'm like, ah, okay, I have to I have to go around and like extract him to my base, which is well. Yeah. There's one mission later on where that, like I, I, like kills me to to complete that mission. Um, it's in chapter two. Oh, you actually played through that, or did you watch yeah. it? Well, no, I watched it. Ah, oh, no, you should have played I know, it. I know that it, mission it, hurts when you play it, man. It, yeah, it does. And like, okay, the thing with the thing of chapter two that that got me is that I completed chapter one, and I thought chapter two was gonna be DLC, and then it was like right there, chapter two, and I got this thing. It was like, all right, I'm done with this game. Whew, finally, I've made it this way. And then it's like freaking chapter two immediately after they showed the preview for chapter two. What is chapter two? <laughs> what we're is probably, We're probably going to have, we're, gonna, we're probably going to need to have a chapter two for this T2VT because oh, we're running out of time. Can Actually, I, no, I was about to say we should probably start to wrap up. Can I, can I describe one last thing? No. Please. Fine. All right. Make it quick. This is, this is my preferred, like, this is how I thought they would end and how I hoped the game would end. No. All right. Has this got spoilers? No, no spoilers. You're going to spoil it for well, Var because he's not, he hasn't completed chapter one yet. Well, you, I mean, s- slight spoilers. Save it. Nothing. No, no, no. no, no. Me, save it. Come on, finish. dude. Okay. All right. No, there's, there's like, at the most, you know, all right. What like happens? All right. Takes place maybe 20 Time years after I'm cutting your then. salary if this, if okay. this all right, really sure. spoils it. You get a call. From uh from Kaz. And he's like, Boss, someone has infiltrated Mother Base. And this is like after after the game's complete and you've built up Mother Base, you have everything completed, you know, there. It's like someone's infiltrating Mother Base. You need to get down and back to the base and, you know, the find who this guy is. You go back to the base, it's like that one mission, you know, where there there's a, you know, those rebels around. Uh some people are acting crazy, some people, you have to Step down. You're trying to find the commander, and the commander's running his way through Mother Base. So you have to go and you do all that stuff in Mother Base. It ends up you finally catch a sight of him, and it's Solid Snake. And you go in, and you like so you're, you're chasing Solid Snake, and he he gets into the room with uh, Cephalanthropus, all right. And Kaz is like, all right, boss, you need to take him down, get into Cephalanthropus, and you know, and start. You know, you have to use it now. There's basically no other choice. He get you get into the mission, and you try to you know you keep targeting them, you keep trying to shoot him, but you're unable to kill him because this is the boss battle from the Metal Gear Solid. Uh, yeah, I was about to say this sounds like Metal MGS Gear One. Like no, no, yeah. not, not even. I mean, not, not MGS One. Like yeah, MG1. Metal Gear One. 
So right. now you are playing like it's come full circle. You're you know seeing the <laughs> you're boss playing come as the from boss in Metal Gear now, One. You are the boss in Metal Gear One, and you're fighting Solid Snake in the giant Metal Gear that he pilots at the end. So now you're on the other end of that boss battle, and you're trying to take. But doesn't Snake that down. take place like years after this? Yeah, yeah, that's why I would say it would. Yeah, that, Kahi did it would take place it would twenty years. Like twenty years. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I got you. Yeah, so there would be like an epilogue after you completed everything, you built Mother Base up, and like you're building Mother Base to be that entire base that you go through in MGS1. Just imagine that briefing, though. Snake, we need you to infiltrate this base. What's a base? What is a base? <laughs> is the mother base for the Diamond Dogs. Who are the Diamond mother Dogs? Do you have something mother to do base. with Metal Gear? <laughs> As a matter of fact, yes, they do. Then I'm in. <laughs> yeah, you have one. It's right here. Remember? No. <laughs> I don't remember at all. Metal Gear. Where is How can I trust gear? you? Ah, crap! I can't out trust anyone ever again. But I feel that would be that would be like a great ending to like you know Kojima and his legacy would be like the first game he does in the series. It, it would be nice. Shame Kojima it, it would come full like, circle, which is why I'm really curious to see what the the very ending of this game is going to be because I still haven't beaten it yet. I think you might be disappointed by the very the, yeah the, yeah. I don't think it's going to be a. a you don't cool think it's going to as... be all that fulfilling. I mean, I know what it is. Yeah, no, we've, we've, we've both seen it. So, so I, I think you might be disappointed with it. Some people are very, that's why I was talking about it. This would be my preferred ending because that's like a great callback and it's the fulfillment of the entire game up until now. Um, and the ending they gave you right. is a little. We'll see. We'll see. It, because uh, if I've... anything, the ending that you get might be under fulfilling. You might feel a little cheated. Right. Hmm. All right. We'll see what happens then. But hey, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, right, we'll, we'll talk about that in the future when we all get to yeah, it. TV talks Thanks Metal Gear Solid watching. Part Two. Thanks for watching Metal Gear. TV talks um, Metal Gear. TV talks Metal Gear. Uh, thank you for watching. Tune in next week. Make sure to watch us on Vessel. Do all the cool things and whatnot that you've probably been. Oh hey, we're doing video series for- now. It's exclusively on Vessel. Plugging that. Oh, uh, yes, guess, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So um, if you watched last week's podcast, you probably heard us talking about the new book club show that we're going to be doing. It's going to be it's going to be released this Saturday on Vessel. It has a video of us all. We're all doing a video chat this time, so yep. a little different. The video portion will not be released on YouTube. Right. It's Vessel exclusive, but you don't have to be a paid subscriber, so you can watch the video portion on Vessel for free. So hopefully that'll be after, fun. After a week. Uh, yeah, af- after the week. Yeah, after that the week. Is true. Right. Like you, you can get the um the early access, like all our all our other videos, and watch it this Saturday for early access. If right. not, it'll be um next week. Right. right. Um, yep. And the the audio portion will audio portion will be released on YouTube, so you will still hear you'll still get the club if you're on YouTube. You just won't get us on video. Yep. Just to make that clear. But yeah. So we will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Var. I'm Kahi. I'm Ben. And see you later. Keep you waiting, huh?